Let's demonstrate how 64-bit numbers are added on a 32-bit system. So we'll be using Ubuntu 32-bit to show how two 64-bit numbers are added when we only have 32-bit registers. Uh, so let's get right into it. Uh, we'll have a 64-bit number, and that 64-bit number is broken into 32-bit halves. So uh, you'll have 32 bits to represent the higher order bits and 32 bits for the lower order bits of that uh, first number. And we'll have another 64-bit number that we'll have stored and we'll also have the 32 bits for the lower order and 32 bits for the higher order um, so what happens is the first number is moved into registers since we have to move it into registers to perform the addition so the lower order portion of the first number is moved into register then the higher order portion of that first number is moved into register then the second thing is done for the second number the lower order half is moved into a 32-bit register as well as the higher order half is moved into a register. After the values are moved into registers the lower order bits are added so the two halves of the two lower halves of the numbers are added uh, after that's done the higher order halves are added to each other and in order to handle carryover from the lower order numbers if these uh, numbers are added and you know we need to carry some numbers over to the higher order portion there's a flag on the CPU called the carry flag um, and there's a specific instruction called uh, add with carry and it incorporates this carry flag into this addition so uh, what we'll do and we'll start a program and let's just get right into that so let's go to a terminal window and we'll just enter editor mode for a simple program. We'll call it longadd.c and we'll do the skeleton. Uh, we'll use long long data type since we know that's what we need for a 64-bit number on this 32-bit system. We'll call our first number n1 and let's create another variable in two for our second number and we will use a third variable to add those two numbers together and what we'll do is let's craft a number that will make it easy to work with so let's uh, pick some numbers that way when we look at the numbers that it's moving to register we'll know exactly what it is so for our first number uh, to make it easy let's use one we we'll use a value of 1 for the higher order half and a value of 3 for the lower order half. And our second number, let's use a value of 2 for the higher order and a value of 4 for the lower order. So let's just go to our calculator to make this a little easier to do. Um, we'll do 2. So if we want to get a value of 1 in our higher order bits, we need to set the 30 second bit and for a value of 2 in the higher order half we need to set the 33rd bit and then what we'll do after that to get a value of 3 and 4 we'll just add 3 to this number and we'll just add 4 to that number and it'll give us what we want so I'm gonna copy uh, the first number and go back to the program and we'll add 3 to it. And let's get our second number and we'll add 4 to that. So now whenever values are being moved to the register we'll know exactly uh, based on the, whether the value is 1, 2, 3, or 4 we'll know exactly what uh, we're looking at and it'll make it a little easier to understand the assembly. So let's save it and get ready to compile it with our debug symbols and the dash O flag so we can name our executable long add and we'll specify long add C as our program. So now it's executed and let's get right into GDB. So let's open GDB on our long add program. Set a breakpoint on main and let's run it. So let's look at the disassembly and we'll briefly try to step through what's going on here. Um, after the the frame is taken care of uh, we'll get into the meat of what's happening with our 64-bit numbers so we can see here that our 
value of 3, which is our lower order portion of our first number, is moved into this value in memory. And that should correspond to our n1 variable that we created to store that number. Um, so let's, let's just look exactly where this uh, offset in memory is. 8 bytes from the stack pointer. And that corresponds uh, exactly with where our n1 variable is. So you can see it moving the value of 3 to this offset and then the higher order value of 1 to this offset of C from the stack pointer. And then next, it looks like I forgot to add 4 to our variable. So, um, so we'll just know our value is 0 instead of 4. Uh, so here the lower order value of 0 is being moved to an offset of 10 from the stack pointer and that should be our n2 variable. And our n2 variable, you can see it's at 120 in memory. And let's just demonstrate that that's exactly where it's putting it. So it's putting this value in the offset of um, 10 hex from the stack pointer. So again, it's moving the lower order value of 0 into this uh, location in memory and the higher order value of 2 which we crafted into this location in memory. Um, and then after that, after the values are moved into memory, they're moved into registers. So here our first order or our first number is moved into registers. Um, an offset, or actually this is the second. So uh, the lower order portion of our second number is moved into the EAX register and the higher order portion of our second number is moved into the EDX register. And then secondly, and then next, uh, our first number is moved into register. So here you can see the lower order portion at 8 bytes offset from the stack pointer, which is our lower order portion, is moved into the ECX register. And then an offset of hex C from the stack pointer is moved into the EBX register. And I'll set a breakpoint. If you want to set a breakpoint in assembly, you need to use the memory location. So now we've got that breakpoint set and we'll continue and we should end up when we're ready to do the add operation. And let's look at our assembly again and you can see that the first add portion that's going to be done is adding the ECX to the EAX register which are our lower order bit numbers. So let's ECX is 3 which is uh, the lower order portion of our first number and then EAX which should be a value of 0 which is our lower order portion of our second number and those two numbers are added together and the value is going to remain 3 uh, and then after that what happens is we do an add using the carry flag of the EBX and the EDX registers which are our higher order bit numbers so if we want to look at the flags, you can do info reg, and, and the E flags would actually tell you if you had a carry or not, and it's just um, shown with a, a C, which we can demonstrate uh, after this example. And if you want to just look at that individual flag, you can do info reg E flags just to see that one register, and it'll tell you which flags are set. So again, we're ready. Hit next I, and that add of the higher order portions of the number is performed and then after that's done um, the lower order portion of that addition is moved into this location in memory and the higher order portion of that number is moved into this location in memory so this location in memory should account for our or it should point to our n3 variable so that's where our n3 is and let's print ESP with an offset of 18 so and again, our addition is performed and it's moved to where this value is. And that's how a 60, two 64 bit numbers are added on a 32 bit system. Now, let's give an example what happens whenever we actually need to do a carry. So we'll exit GDB and we will craft our number so that we uh, get a carry when we do our addition. So we'll just try to make something easy. So what we'll do is we'll use hex. That makes it uh, a bit easier. So for the first number, we'll just use, I'll use 01 for the 
higher order portion of this number and I'll do uh, all F's for the lower order portions. Um, so let's store that hex number. And for our second number, let's do something similar where it would be 0 by 0, 2. And we will just, let's just use a value of 1. And that'll make it easier. So when this portion should account for the lower order part of the number, and this is the lower order portion of our second number. So we'll be adding 1 to all Fs, which should give us all zeros when we add them, and it should carry one over to the higher order portion. So let's save that and compile it again, just like we did before. And let's set our breakpoint for main. I'm not going to walk through all the specifics again. And let's run it. And look at our disassembly. Um, and here you can see the values. Again, the higher order and lower order portions being moved into memory. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to create another breakpoint um, right before the first addition is performed. So our breakpoint is set, and let's do a continue. Control L or clear to clear the screen. And again, let's look at our disassembly. So now the ECX and the EAX numbers are going to be added together. And let's look at the values in the ECX. And let's look at the value in EAX. So we got um, all ones for our 32 bit number in the first register and a value of one in the second register. And when that's added, we should get overflow. So again, let's look at our, let's just go ahead and do the add. Hit the next die to go to the next instruction. And info reg E flags. And we should see our carry flag is set here since the addition of those two numbers resulted in a carry. And let's look at our disassembly. So EBX and EDX are going to be added together. So if we print EBX, we have a value of 1, and EDX is a value of 2. So that would give us 3. So let's hit our next instruction. And again, now let's look at the value of our addition. And you can see we've got a value of 4. So that carry was uh, accounted for in the addition. And that's how 64-bit numbers are added on a 32-bit system. I'll put the code, I'll put a link to the code down below if you're interested in running it. Thanks.